In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to talk a little bit about um, what's going on in Israel, what happened there, and uh, maybe just reflect on some things that uh, surrounding it and um, reminding Catholics that, you know, the most important thing is to pray um, for, for both sides, for the people of Israel and for the people of Palestine, because no one wins in a war. There are no winners. And nine times out of ten, the ones that take the, you know, the, the brunt of war are civilians. Um, there's a propaganda flying around trying, to, you know, and we've seen it already, uh, you know, with protests and that of people taking sides. And I would personally advise against that. I don't think that, um, I think what we need to focus on is turning our hearts to God. And the reason is, from what I said in the in the previous video, is that, you know, if we are to believe Our Lady of Fatima, that war is a punishment for sin, and knowing that we've already been through two chastisements, World War One and World War Two, not to mention all the other, you know, smaller wars and skirmishes here and there around the world. When you when you compare the the sin, the amount of sin in the world today compared to what it was then, um, we are due. And I, we really need to keep in mind that the reordering of the world structure is something that can change very very quickly with, especially with the weapons that governments around the world have. Um. People are asking whether or not we are on the verge of World War III. Personally, I believe World War III began when Russia invaded Ukraine. Um, you're seeing countries aligning themselves with one another. Um, And so I, for personally, I believe it's already started. I believe Pope Francis has said the same thing. We, that, you know, we, World War III has already begun. And so when things like this happen, um, you see countries align themselves with each other, backing one or the other. But the fact of the matter is no one wins in war. There are no winners. And so, you know, it's, it's the most important thing is to pray. Is to pray that God have mercy. And again, especially with the weapons that governments possess around the world. I mean, the, the fact that we even would create such things in, in on such a mass level you know to destroy the entire planet you know 20 or 30 times over is insanity i i have questions about what happened in israel um it seems very very odd to me that they didn't see this coming and and somehow do something to prevent it. It seems odd to me that the military and the police didn't show up to the scene until about six to eight hours later from some reports that I've read. And, and uh, like I say, checking, double checking, and triple checking, it's probably a really good and, and important thing to do, um, especially with things like this because there are so many... Um, things out there that people will throw out as propaganda and so you want to double check and triple check and you know quadruple check um, but this just that part of it seems very very odd to me there's some things that aren't right about it 
Um, we know that there are elitists in the world that want a one world order. Um, and it's really, <laughs> there's, there's elitists on both sides. And they're, they're really fighting for what kind of one world order that will be. You know, will it fly under the banner of a democratic republic and be anything but kind of like what we're living in now in the United States? Or will it be communism? Um, we have to ask the questions with the president being so compromised and who, how would I say, uh, just from standing on the outside looking in, it wouldn't seem to me he's the one running the show. I've given my opinion on that before and who I believe is, um, who are uh, sympathetic to ISIS, sympathetic to Hezbollah, sympathetic to um, Hamas, sympathetic to Iran, even flew money over there and landed it on their in their airport in the middle of the night so no one would see it. And so we have to understand that there is an enemy within. And it's within every country, I believe, you know, um, so-called free countries that want to reorder the structure of the world. Um, this is one of the things that it means to fundamentally transform the United States of America and then not say what you want to transform it into. Um, liberate Libya. And we went in and we blew a bunch of things up and which led to the murder of a head of state, whether anyone liked Gaddafi or not. Um, and the response of those that did that, they just don't care. You know, about, they laugh that a head of state was murdered. Um, I recently saw an interview of, um, I don't want to get, um, how do I say, turned off or banned here, but an interview who was uh, a person that was recently the Secretary of State a number of years ago and then ran for president um, saying that, that all, all the people that support Trump, um, and again, whether you like him or not, it doesn't matter, it was the wording, needed to be reprogrammed. And uh, I just, I thought about what that, <laughs> you know, what does that look like? to reprogram people who support a, a certain candidate for president. And, and this person ran for president. I mean, what kind of leader speaks like that? There is an agenda here. And I, I think that we need to be aware of that. Uh, just like there's an agenda um, by those within the church that want to do it harm from within. It, Satan is fighting on all fronts. And, you know, what I said just now may sound like a conspiracy theory. But if, if that's the case, then we would have to say what Our Lady of Good Success said about Masonic sects and about globalists and about elitists infiltrating every aspect of our society that um, the Masonic sects would rule or reign. That means have power and, and a lot of power if they're reigning. Um, and those messages were for meant for our time. We would have to call Our Lady's messages also a conspiracy theory. Okay, I, th I think it's very clear of what's happening here. Um, there is no time more important than to pray. And and to pray, we those that are watching this that live in the United States, pray for your country. Pray the chapel of divine mercy every day and offer it in reparation for the sins committed by the United States. 
it's it's not far fetched with the 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 way politics are in this country. Who's running this country? Um, that we have outright socialist, hardcore socialist, Marxists and communists in places of power within our government, that what happened in Israel um, could happen here. And again, I, I really have to wonder how they didn't know it was coming. Or did they know and someone else that they, you know, possibly rely on for better intelligence told him it wasn't. You know, will they allow a false flag attack in the United States to declare martial law? Uh, Barack Obama signed a bill into law to where all the government has to do is call you a terrorist. They don't have to have a reason. They just have to label you a terrorist, terrorist and they can put you in jail. They can arrest you. So it's not far-fetched to, to think that those things can't happen in the United States. I agree with Pope Francis. I believe that World War III has already begun. And I believe that what happened in Israel and the response that we're seeing from them is just an escalation in that. I, I think that um, when I think about what Our Lady of Fatima said about war and that the Father allows it as a punishment for sin, and when I look at the world and the amount of sin, not only in the world, but within the church, it, it shouldn't surprise us a bit that we're facing what we're facing now. War is a terrible thing. And there are many, many families and many children and many people it, that are suffering in these wars in Ukraine, in Russia, in Israel, in Palestine. And they're, they're people just like us, no different. They have jobs, they have families, they have their bills to pay. They, War is senseless. It's senseless. Uh, I, I think what I worry about the most is that, again, the people that are in power, a lot of these people that are in power were groomed by the WEF. Uh, Trudeau's one of them. Putin is one of them. You know, and, and it's the, the WEF that is, you know, talking about a great reset or a new world order. It's, it's all the same thing, you know, that the words are interchangeable, kind of like I talked about, you know, our, our Jesus talking to Faustina about mankind having peace and Our Lady of Fatima talking about peace and, you know, the, the kingdom of the divine will. They're, the words are interchangeable. They mean the same thing. In the book of Daniel, it, it talks about these times. And the angel tells him specifically that until the end, there will be war. And that is the desolation that is decreed. And with Our Lady of Fatima letting the world know that God the Father allows war as a punishment for sin, and looking at the amount of sin within the world, we shouldn't be surprised. It will be in the midst of war that the, that the church is persecuted. It will be in the midst of war that God will raise up saints. It will be in the midst of war that he will work wonders and miracles. You know, in, in the one message that says... Our Lady gives, and, and she talks about a great chastisement, in that 
we will have nothing left but the rosary and the sign left by my son. I wonder if anyone has ever wondered what that sign is. And I've often pondered if it is not the permanent signs that have been prophesied there in Garabandal and in Mejigoria. Um Personally, I believe these permanent signs will appear everywhere she's authentically appeared on the, on the face of the earth. But we are, we, I, I believe we are at the beginning of, um, of a restructuring of the global order. So, and this is nothing new for me. You know, I know what I was shown. And I've been completely honest in everything that I've shared. And uh, it's not a time to be fearful. It's not a time, it's a time to be concerned. It's a time to pray. And again, to see things for what they are. God allows war as a punishment for sin. It's made so clear in the message of Fatima. If people do not better their lives and pray the rosary, a worse one will break out. And what happened? The rise of Hitler, World War II, Pearl Harbor. And, and the, there is more sin in the world now, I believe, than there ever has been. So we need to pray. We need to pray for conversion. We need to pray for the people that are um, that are suffering. You know, in in the time in times of war, two worst enemies can become best friends if their lives depend on one another. And so I would I would recommend again being very cautious about trying to take sides. You know, I mean it's obvious what Hamas did is unspeakable. You know, it it looks like ISIS. You know, it, but again, nobody wins in war. Nobody. And the ones that pay, ultimately pay the, the, the price are civilians. You know, that's usually the, the main target of enemies are, are major cities. You know, populated. And being the, the way the world is and the enemies that we have, I doubt very much that... Um, you know, those cities would be warned, you know. Um, now is the time to pray. If you haven't started already, please start, <laughs> you know. Um, We have to go through the purification in order to receive the gift that we've been promised. And it's inevitable, like I said, you know, and it could be that God has mercy on us, enough people start praying and. and this world is is given peace. You know, I don't know how many times humanity is going to have to do this to itself before it begins to understand how precious life is. That God is real. I think there's a lot of people that are taken back by this because it's Israel, you know. Uh, it's an amazing thing to think about that um, 
it's the land where the Blessed Mother said yes to the angel. It's the land where Jesus himself walked, where the resurrection happened, where the outpouring of the Holy Spirit happened on Pentecost, the birth of the church. And, and 2,000 years later, the church is still here. And she always will be. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. You know, it's, it's one thing to, to know things are coming in advance. It's a completely different thing to see them unfold. Pray that God has mercy on Israel. We pray for the souls that have already died. Um, you know, these are things that we can do with the chaplet and, you know, in, in the divine will. That God has mercy on every single soul that's, that's died. Because the fact of the matter is, God loves every single soul the same. They're all precious in the sight of God. And so there's, you know, those that are going to choose to fight against his church. There are those who are going to choose to fight against God himself. And their end is already done. They will, they will meet their, their end. You can't fight against the church and fight against God himself and win. We need to be at peace. And so these things, um, as concerning as they are, should not disturb our inner peace. God has the ability to grant every single one of us the grace that we need to face whatever we face. And we just need to trust that. Jesus, I trust in you over and over and over again. Pray the rosary. Make reparation for sin. It, it, it can soothe the anger of God. It can lessen chastisement, which, of which one is war. So I, I would just say, you know, I mean, if I don't really know how to say it anymore. Um, if we can't see it um, for what it is, then we can't see. You know, and it's, an, it's as I said, it's an amazing thing when you look at the church Probably, you know, in, you know, some people are calling it the worst crisis ever. When you look at the world, some people are saying it's darker than it's ever been. With all of that happening, we have the light of Medjugorje. We have the light of Our Lady. We have the message of the divine will. We have the diary of Faustina. We have the priesthood. We have the Eucharist. We have the sacraments. Grace is being poured out in abundance for those who are turning to God. We need to turn to Jesus with everything that we are. Place everything that we own, everything that we have in the hands of Our Lady and completely trust them. This is where peace will come. This is where peace is found. Renounce everything of the world. Everything that is important should be a far, far second to our hopefully very deep and intimate relationship with Jesus Christ and with his mother. The intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit.
if the world continues to go the way it's going in rejecting God, bombs will will hit every continent, every country. So we need to focus on what is above and not what is below. We need to focus on the victory and the triumph that is promised. I would repeat the, the words of Jesus to Faustina, that mankind will not have peace until it turns with trust to my mercy. And the fact that peace has already been prophesied and promised by the Queen of Heaven is to say that it's only a matter of time before mankind does. Pray for a hastening of the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And be at peace. Don't, don't let these things disturb you. Don't fall into the propaganda and all the news and I'm sure we'll have a bunch more, you know, quote unquote messages coming out now, which again, I have to wonder why, why they didn't see the Russia Ukraine war coming. Why wasn't that foretold? Why wasn't, you know, why wasn't this foretold? So listen to the voice of Jesus in your own hearts, in your life. Listen to the voice of Jesus in the confessional through the priest. Listen to those who are trying to get the church to focus on God and not tearing down the church with every opportunity and every chance they get. Stay away from the voices that are beating down and bashing the Pope. There's so much false propaganda out there. I'm not even sure that some of the priests and bishops in the United States are, are receiving um, things that are actually true are not taken out of context. There's a there's a a spirit of confusion that is it's not only covered the the world it, you know it's it's in the church but we as catholics know who we are we know what the catechism teaches we know that the church is protected by the holy spirit that's not to say that there aren't those within the church that want to do her harm that's not to say that those within the church that want to do her harm won't ha won't somehow um even seize the the levers of power for time. What we do know is that our words, Lord's or our Lord's words are true, that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. God is pouring out amazing gifts. He's raising up warriors spiritual warriors remember our battle isn't against flesh and blood but principalities and powers spirits of the air therefore those spirits have to be fought against with spiritual weapons and the power of the holy spirit far surpasses any of those spirits that's something satan does not want you to know The other thing that Satan does not want you to know is that Jesus himself wants to fill you to overflowing with that same Holy Spirit. When a Catholic, a believer, knows that, all of hell trembles. We have to keep our faith in Jesus. We have to keep focused on him. Stay in the middle of the boat because it's going to get stormy. It already is. And um, the, 
make reparation for sin. Pray the chaplet every day and offer it in reparation for the sins committed by this country, especially the sin of abortion. Pray not only that this evil be unveiled, but the people that are accountable or, or, or that are responsible for it are held accountable. Pray that the veil be removed, that the world sees it for what it is. Make the first five Saturdays of reparation. We've been given all the instruction in the world on how to get through the times in which we're living. We've been given the instructions from a long time ago, starting with Fatima. All we have to do is live it. If we live those messages, we have peace. If we live those messages, God has the power to protect us from anything that the world could threaten to do, uh, not only to us, but to itself. I would again use the example of the four priests that were in Hiroshima. Have faith, childlike faith, trust in God, pray the rosary, pray the chaplet. Every day, live the message of Fatima. And, and please pray for the Ukrainian people, pray for the Russian people. Pray for the Palestinian people. Pray for the, the, the Israelis, the Jews. Pray for peace. Pray for a hastening of the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And above all, be at peace. Rest in God. Trust in His mercy. It's, it's only by his grace and his mercy that we ourselves have received the grace that we have, that we're able to see things for what they are, that, we, that we're, we're familiar with the message of divine mercy in Fatima and the writings of Luisa Picaretta, that we're reforming our own lives, that we're allowing God to fill us up to overflowing with the divine life of Jesus Christ himself. May God bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. And may he grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.